<laughs> do it, do it. Do you say it? Yeah? yeah, quickly. No, that's the. Uh, quick! Test 1212, episode 26. We're going on month three of 2023. I don't know about you, but I, I this year feels the same as last year, doesn't it? I, I mean, a few things are changing, but they're mostly in the natural selection department. I read an article the other day about how more Australians are falling to their deaths while trying to take a selfie. Yeah, it's never good when you're outshining America in the stupidity department. 3,747 people plunged to their death because they just had to take a photo of their face that no one would ever care about by a cliff. This is the highest number recorded since they started keeping track of these incidents in 2012. I love the fact they even started tracking this stuff. I mean... At least I'm not the only one documenting the decline of humanity. Jesus. I will say I am seeing an uptick in another type of behavior as well. These guys who film themselves talking to imaginary women. Come here. Uh, come here. Come on. I got a message for you. You're lovable. You're beautiful, and you got a delicious booty. What is that? Good girl. Yeah, they're multiplying. What would you do if you saw me at the red light, and I honked my horn at you, and we made eye contact, and I said to you, What's up, baby girl? What would you say? I wouldn't say anything. I'd just exit my car and walk into incoming traffic. I don't think I'd be able to live knowing that interaction happened. Gobble, gobble. You know, and they talk about all these UFOs everyone's supposedly seeing all of a sudden now. Like, you really think aliens are interested in coming in contact with us? I'd be shocked at this point. You know, and, and they say we're shooting them down. Well, I mean, if we are, we're doing them a favor. One thing's for sure. We're saving them the disappointment of landing in Philadelphia. I mean, could you imagine if the aliens planned to make their descent onto this street? Like this was the day they decided to make the bold move to introduce themselves to us. And right up the street, they see a sea of halfwits like this, flipping cars over because people threw a ball around. Look at these people. This is our species. Anyway, we got my buddy Rick Kosick from Jackass calling in today. I got to pick his brain about what's happening here. Rick's been filming and documenting absurd human behavior his entire career well before I have. Everything from Jackass, Wild Boys, Big Brother, Robin Big. And I'm telling you, if Rick's concerned with what's going on today, then there's a real problem. Although I got to say, what's great about the shows he's involved with, they were created within the context of comedy. There's also a level of camaraderie that comes with it, too. Whereas the clown show I've been covering the past few years here in this country, that has been created in the context of delusion. And we're going to explore where that line is. But before we get into things, let me shout out my newest sponsor, Honey, for supporting the show today. You want to save money online when you shop? This is the easy way. This thing scans the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your shopping cart. You could add this to your desktop. It works on your iPhone. I buy vinyl all the time online. I probably saved $100 this month using this. When you check out, you'll see the Honey button appears, and all you do is click Apply Coupons. If it finds one for you, it'll apply it and you'll save money. It's awesome and it's easy. This is the best thing to use for saving money. 
Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash joeybvs. That's joinhoney.com slash joeybvs. Link in the description. Did you guys see TikTok is now setting a one-hour screen time limit for teenagers under the age of 18? Yeah, so if you're under 18, apparently a message pops up asking you for a passcode to continue scrolling. Right, because asking for a passcode is going to stop the zombies. <laughs> How about instead of asking for a passcode, you ask them things like, when are you going to start doing something with your life? Let's get some motivational messages popping up for these people. Every hour, a pop-up should show up with things like two hours. <laughs> really? You've really given up, haven't you? Another hour wasted. Press yes to continue wasting your life. I mean, by hour five, you should be getting things like five hours? Really, Spencer? You pathetic loser, you. If that doesn't motivate them to log off after hour five, the platform should just start sending them ultimatums. Like at hour six, it should say something like, look, dude, we didn't want to do this, but we've sent a TikTok employee to your house with flowers and a bottle of liquor to pick up your mother. So if you're okay with this, just press continue to keep scrolling and we'll make sure that they're both chauffeured to the Motel 6. And if that doesn't work, by hour seven, I don't know, maybe something like, okay, see now what we're going to do? Since you've made it clear you have no interest in becoming a productive member of society, uh, we've alerted the town you live in that uh, you're donating everything in your house to the community. Uh, we, you know, we figured since you don't care about anything aside from social media, uh, we'd have the entire town come and take what they want from your house. This way you could continue doing nothing and yet still contribute to society. Uh, <laughs> trust me, if they did stuff like that, you'd start seeing a drop off in screen time. Trust me. See, if I ran things, everything would be different. This wouldn't end with limitations on the app. I'd set limitations in public. I'm talking TikTok free zones. We need to start implementing zoning laws against filming TikToks. It really is getting out of hand, especially in LA. The fuck are you guys doing? This generation's fucked. Then you got shit like this. This is the brother of Patrick Mahomes, the football player. I mean, they're doing interviews, and he's, he's got to sneak in on the field behind the camera to get his little TikTok in. When did doing this become an accomplishment for people? Like, what is that? I mean, you look like you got a neurological disorder. I don't get it, man. Anyway, let's get Rick in here. I, I'm going to shout out my friends at Raycon real quick before we do that. You know, people talk about all these big changes they're going to make in their life, but I feel like people don't realize how big of an impact the smallest changes to your routine has on things. Do you know how helpful these headphones have been for me to get through a workout? I use the everyday earbuds and the fitness earbuds. They've been flawless since I got them. They're half price of the other premium audio brands. You can customize the sound profiles. There's noise isolation if you want to drown out any nonsense around you. If you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, go to buyraycon.com slash joeybvs today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash joeybvs to score 15% off. All right, let's get Rick in here. So my next guest is a photographer and filmmaker known for his work on Jackass, Big Brother, Wild Boys, Robin Big, and on and on and on. Rick Kosick, what's going on, brother? Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Look, Rick, you, you might be the only people I know who've documented more stupid human behavior than me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you've, you've witnessed firsthand some of the, the most wildest stunts that I think anybody's ever seen on television on the big screen but you know i feel like the level of stupidity going on in this country right now has far exceeded the standards of jackass correct me if i'm wrong here i think it, i think you're right i just feel like the stuff we do on jackass and other things are are funny the stuff that you see on these other platforms are not so funny that's what I'm getting at. Now, I, I, I sent you an article before we started the show here about a woman who decided that she wanted to become disabled by pouring drain cleaner in her eyes to cause herself to go blind. 
Nine years ago, Jewel took the drastic decision to blind herself, and she researched the method she would use. I found that lye is very painful, although it does get the job done. I found that drain cleaner is a little less painful, although it does a lot of damage to the eye. When I see somebody uh, pouring drain cleaner in her eyes to cause herself to go blind, I mean, I, I, I got to call you, Rick. I got I to know, what, what, do you, what do you make of this? <laughs> When I watched the video, I wish there was a, a reaction on my face because I was just like, oh, my God, why would this person do this to themselves? Well, it's crazy because I don't know if you read any further, but apparently her psychiatrist was the one that lent her, her, lent her the hand. She found a psychologist willing to help her. And after two weeks of working together to make sure she was ready, they carried out Jules' plan. I laid down on the sofa and he sat next to me, dro two drops into each eye. My eyes were screaming. I had some drain cleaner going down my cheek, burning my skin. I mean, now we have the... <laughs> We have the psychiatric industry helping these people destroy their lives. Our job is to reduce suffering however it's possible. I'm just floored by it. I'm floored by it. I mean, why would that man, does he, how can he sleep at night feeling like he did a great thing? I don't know. Where is he right now? He should, he should be in prison. I mean, I, I watched a video right before the show today of a kid walking around Manhattan asking people what continent they're on. And they don't even know. I think I sent you the video. They, the girl didn't even know her, where Hawaii was. Do you know what continents we're on right now? Oh, that's sad. Um, Hi, guys. No, I don't. What's 10% of 10? Around one, like if you had to guess. One. <laughs> Around one. Around one and two. Give me a final guess. Two. Yes. I think that channel's pretty hilarious. I get a good kick out of every time I watch his videos. <laughs> and it, it, it makes me think like the Times Square is just a, a vortex of stupidity and they just all funneling right there. And the guy's just getting gold everywhere he points his camera. So what ocean is touching the east coast of the USA? East of the USA? Pacific? Yeah. What country is Hawaii in? What? I don't know. Guess the country. Give me your best guess. No wrong answers. Bo, I dead don't know. Um, I don't know. I can't even guess what because I really... No, no, guess a country. Guess a country. What Any country? Country? I feel like when you got Steve-O shooting bottle rockets out of his ass, I feel like it's a wasted amount of bottle rockets. I feel like they should have been aimed at these people. I mean, do you have any plans to maybe just, uh, you know, incorporate some of these bozos into the film, the next films? <laughs> no, you know what? If there was to be another one, <laughs> hell no. Because I, I, I feel like what you see amongst the jackass guys, there's a certain charm to it. And, you know, they're, it, it's all bros. And, like, honestly, none of them are willing to, to want to participate. They're, like, either, like, tricked into it and then you get the reaction or – you know, like they're bombed, you know, except for Danger yeah. Aaron and Jackass Forever wanted to smash his nuts with a pogo stick. Well, I mean, you have some experience getting hit in the nuts, too. I've, I've seen you. Knoxville seems to, you seem to be a target for Knoxville, if I could remember correctly. I mean, how are your nuts holding up, dude? Everything's everything. Let me check. Everything's fine. Good. Everything. Yeah, you know, anytime you're on set, there's like a code. And like when someone comes around, you got to kind of cover. Because if you're not covered, there yeah. it's an open invitation. They'll they'll get you. Okay. What's up? <laughs> not much. How you been? High five! <laughs> you know, it's funny, man. Going back to what you said about how, you know, a lot of the stuff on Jackass is done and, you know, where it's like there's a camaraderie, there's a brotherhood. It kind of takes me back to like the, the whole ball busting culture that I grew up with in New York, where it was kind of like you were always brought down to a certain level. Like if you're wearing a goofy shirt or you're wearing a stupid hat or you, you made a fool of yourself, we reminded each other of that. And I feel like that was a sense of camaraderie amongst men.
And I just feel like sometimes people don't understand the line between actual stupidity and camaraderie and comedy. Because I look at the Jackass guys as like a live action Looney Tunes show. I mean, I think it brings a lot of joy to people. What would you have to say about the critics to Jackass to say that it's all nonsense and it's bad for America? I disagree. Well, I think TikTok is bad for America first. Uh, Back to what you're saying. What I liked about anything that we've ever done, like Knoxville would watch all the cartoons. That's how he writes a lot of his materials by watching cartoons. And then, then, you know, he funnels that and gets an idea and he'll probably build off an idea of a Tom and Jerry cartoon and go from there, you know, and that that's, you know. Any rocket scientist, you know, we're we're not rocket scientists, what we're doing here at Jackass, but, you know, we try to take it to the next level, you know? And I think we achieved that in the latest film. It's funny that you bring up the TikTok thing because the contrasting difference that I'm seeing from Jackass and TikTok is I'm seeing a lot of people that don't have a comedic bone in their body. I mean, twirling your arms in the bedroom and making NyQuil chicken, pouring NyQuil on chicken Uh and cooking it. I mean, like stuff like that. And and what's uh, interesting about it is that when one person comes out with it, everybody copies it. Yeah, I think the problem is like a lot of these people on all these, you know, are looking at their phone and they don't yeah. know how to interact with people. And that's why it's not genuine. I don't think it's funny. I'm, honestly, I I deleted my TikTok account. I, I'm over it. Well, I'm not even allowed on there anymore. So, yeah, it's just fucking garbage. I, yeah. I was just so shocked by what people are, are putting up. And I'm like, wow, people are just thirsty for attention. You know, if there's one guy in particular that I was a big fan of that I thought it was a real creative force behind Jackass and going all the way back to the CKY days was Brandon D. Camillo. I just, I have not heard from Brandon in years and I was really bummed that he dipped out and he was so funny and so charismatic and very, very creative guy. And I just think maybe something happened between him and his circle of buddies in Westchester uh, and I just, he was just like, I'm done, you know? And so I, I don't know what he does today and I, I hope he's happy and I wish he could have been with us for, for the ride that we've been on. And, uh, it's just, yeah, he was so funny. Very, very funny guy. Look at that. You win a yell. Look at this, it's made out of fucking ceramic cup. Look at this. Kiss me, ladies! Oh, am I lucky tonight? <laughs> oh, here's the good luck and friends, but I am! Not your own Are all cheaters. This bag, it brings a fucking dog to play cards. They brought fingers in <laughs> oh my god, Ryan! Oh, 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 you idiot! God, I've seen him suck a dick before, but this is ridiculous! <laughs> All of you, get out of here and clean up. I'm going to bed. <laughs> going to bed. I got something to tell you guys! Ryan! My wife, I was going to get married to you. I'm still a winner. I take my winnings and I go. And you my girlfriend all you want, Ryan. But f her God, Ryan! <laughs> I see Brandon as somebody who's just a genuine, funny, comedic type of guy, like an unscripted, like you put a camera in front of him, he's just going to ad lib his way to hell. <laughs> just, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. You know? He was so good at it. And just, man, I just remember there was like some pirate thing we did on a TV show. Forgive me, I don't remember every little detail we've ever done, but God, he was just so fun and just funny and yeah, he's definitely, I miss that guy. My name's Scott Bradford. I'm 19. I'm going to be 20 in, like, December. Like I said, I loved the last Jackass movie, but I got to be honest, I was, like, really disappointed not to see Bam in the movie. How do you feel about Bam not being a part of the la- last Jackass? Do you think it was justified? 
Well, I mean, he, I mean, I really don't want to talk too much about it, but I think he kind of did it to himself, you know? And so it's unfortunate. I mean, it would have been great to have him there. Yeah. Well, and go ahead. It's just, yeah, it's just, it sucks, you know? And then, you know, obviously he has his, what he brings to the whole chemistry, you know? And, but yeah, it's, uh, it was sucked that he couldn't be there with us. Well, it's got to be hard considering, I mean, he was, you know, one of the origin originators. He was kind of one of the pioneers of that. I mean, I know you've worked with him, you know, in the old CKY days and stuff like that. And it's got to be kind of heartbreaking to see somebody who was like a, you know, a integral figure like that, you know, not be a part of it, you know, whether it is his own doing or not, you know, it's like, there's almost, you know, me personally, I, I just feel like, you know, not to say that there wouldn't be that without him, but I mean, it's like, he's one of the original Looney Tunes characters. It's like not sure. having Bugs Bunny in the Looney Tunes movie. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like, you know, no matter what the guy's doing, as long as he's not hurting somebody else, I would think that should get a pass to be in the damn thing that that's just how i feel but i don't know the behind the scenes and i'm just a fan and i'm speculating you know but yeah. just i think that a lot of people would probably share those sentiments no i'm sure and, and i believe me i saw all the comments and i get it you know but the show must go on yeah you know and it's just, it just sucks i can't change anything what's done is done and that's it you know, yeah. but we still, I think we did a really good job with the latest movie and it was a lot of fun. It, unfortunately, it came out at a weird time. You know, it was delayed because of the stupid pandemic. Yeah. And uh, God, I'm just so over all that shit. Yeah, that must have been really difficult to film during all that because I heard it started and it stopped. And I mean, was there ever uh, a point where you didn't even think it was ever going to be finished? It was weird because I remember like we were... Uh, the first week we were going to, I was riding the set with uh, Jeff Tremaine and we're listening to Howard Stern and they're like all talking about you know, the pandemic. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah. wow, is this, is this going to be real? You know, like, yeah. you know, at that point where we didn't know. And so, and then we, we shot this really great scene called uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs where Everyone, it was like the best thing I think we filmed the entire movie is where everyone goes in, they think they're going to see a snake show, and all of a sudden the doors slam shut and the lights get turned off and they can't see at all. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, but, and after that day, boom, things got shut down, I think for seven or eight, nine months, you know, and then, and then we come back to set and we like, walking onto a sci-fi film like i'm like yeah. who are all these people everyone's yeah. got masks and everything we have to wear a mask we're filming and it's like this is, sucks <laughs> you're expected to protect yourself from a virus but not your ass <laughs> yeah, yeah that is that is wild i thought about you too man i'm like how how are you dealing with that and how do you get through that but hey in the end product i mean you know i i thought it, i thought it came across great man but man what a struggle that must have been yeah it was weird because like basically only a limited p pe- i was not i usually go in every film we've ever made i i go in the office i sit in the editing bay watch everything being cut and, yes. you know on this film i wasn't allowed to go into the office at all oh, you know wow. so and so the only the editors are allowed to go in the office like Jeff and Knox and all they never even went in the office. They all stayed from home and they had like these uh, you can work from your computer because you know it's like a zoom, but somehow you're working with the editor and yeah. That was so bizarre, man. Oh. It's like man, this sucks, you know. And you know, it's it's funny. I was uh before, also before I had John, I was, people keep sending me this stupid video of Lady Gaga being vomited on on stage. Have you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I, I'm just wondering though if she'll be if you will be recruiting her for the next Jackass film because I I feel like she was trying to audition. <laughs> if she can serenade all of us, that'd be cool, you know. But I I I haven't seen the video. I mean, how did she yeah. vomit on? Like it went up on her, like from the from the audience. Yeah, well, I only watched the first two seconds of the video because I knew it was coming. It starts out with a woman standing over top of her with her fingers in her mouth on stage uh-huh. in an arena. 
I mean, this is like, and I don't know how this hasn't come out. I mean, it, apparently this is an older video, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe because of all the craziness with the Grammys now, everybody's kind of realizing how twisted some of these people are. I think but. everyone's really focused in on Madonna and her new looks. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I mean, what just, that is. She looks like Jigsaw. I, I I thought it was like I thought they were gonna promote the next uh, Saw movie or something when she walked <laughs> out. I mean, I I feel it's, it's kind of sad because she was like really pretty, you know, and uh, like I don't know what she's doing, and it's obviously she's uncomfortable with how she's aging, and uh, she should just chill out and be happy, man. She was cool. She was did a lot of great things. Absolutely. I mean. Even though she did pop music and all that, she was actually creative. Like all the music videos look different. You could tell she was a true artist. And when mm -hmm. always, you know, it's funny because talking about the face changes and all that, I felt the same way when I saw, uh, what's her name? Gwen Stefani. I mean, she totally changed her face and I'm sure it's not going to end. I mean, it's sad, to be honest, I mean, I usually when it starts like that, they keep going and going and going and she's fairly young. And, and there's another case of someone who I thought was a super creative, original uh, artist, singer, musician. And to me, when I see people that have something about them that's unique and creative that people look up to and be like, wow, she's cool. I want to be like her in a positive way. And then you got them all of a sudden trying to be like all the people who are trying to be pretty, trying to be creative, trying to be different by going under the knife and 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 getting surgery to basically look like a Kardashian. I mean, like these women, Stefani and Madonna, I feel like are way more creative and legendary than all these people. I, I don't know what kind of lack, what, what's lacking in them to make them want to go that route. I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't either. And I mean... I think I saw something with Gwen Stefani and she definitely looked a little different. I'm, but I mean, she, gosh, she's a legend. Like what, yeah. what are you doing? You know, like, I don't know, man. I, I just, I see all these videos of people, you know, with, with the plumped up lips and the, and the boobs and the asses. I mean, I was, I, I, I saw some video today of some lady. She's got the biggest lips in the world, apparently. And, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about Jackass. And I'm like, I, I, I was like, I, I have a pitch for a future jackass skit. I mean, I what well, we could call it the human hot air balloon. I mean, some of these some of these women with the blown up lips and boobs, they tie all these people together. I mean, they would they would lift off into the air and and you could have Knoxville fly around the world with them. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to. <laughs> I just think it's funny how like uh platforms like TMZ give these uh tick these other social media platform people like the 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 title is star right and i'm just like are you kidding me yeah they're not stars what are they done i i just i just don't understand why we don't celebrate talent or or anything exceptional about people anymore i just i just don't know what happened yeah you know i was really upset when jeff beck passed away and i had this feeling like you know here's a man who's put years into his skill and craft right and and now he you know, unfortunately passed away and now it's like what do we have to look forward to is like these people on tiktok doing silly stuff well talking to an imaginary girl calling her a good girl and like <laughs> oh don't like, get me going on him that's a that's a sore <laughs> spot I've, i'm done with that guy I'm yeah done, but i'm done just, <laughs> that's my example it's like this is what we have looked look forward to. And it's like, I was just yeah. so bombed, you know, I'm like, yeah, and no one really wants to try and become something really significant and you, you can, you know? And yeah, my point I'm getting to is like back when Trump became president, everyone's like, Oh my God, this is going to be the best because we're going to hear some of the best punk music. It's some, it's just going to be the best. Da, 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 da. Right. And nothing, nothing happened because everyone's more focused on, this yeah and getting lights and everyone is just being lazy yeah yeah it's true it, it, it's interesting though how it's like it is the everyday person's fault for being consumed with nonsense and not challenging themselves and not and not, but but there really isn't anything out there to be inspired by because i believe that the people 
who know better are giving these losers platforms? Why are we writing articles about these people as if they, they've accomplished something special and or they're influential? I mean, you got like Julia Fox out here. I mean, God knows what planet that that one's from. I mean, and they they write all these articles about oh how she's she's a bombshell and she's this and she's that. I mean, I read a book of her getting railed by junkies in a trailer park. I mean, these are like I'm sorry to say. Man, I'm like, these are not people that should be celebrated. And what creative bone does she have in her body? I don't understand why we're not given the opportunities to some of these people, like you say, who don't get noticed, who don't get attention. I mean, I I, I follow this girl. She can draw. She's she can draw two paintings at one time with with oh, both I've of her hands. Her Have you seen her before? She's yeah, one of the, very talented. Now, you mean to say that back in 1992, that woman wouldn't be all over the television. I mean, like, where is she? Why is she just lost on the internet with, what, 10,000 followers? That drives me nuts. There's got to be somebody that, that is running a publication or something that sees these people, but I guess it just doesn't sell. I, there's got to be a reason why, because it's not that there's not talented people out there. They're out there, but we're, but I don't know if there's an outlet for, I mean, where's rock and roll? Where's rock and roll? I don't hear it on the radio. When I turn on the modern rock station, how many times are we going to listen to Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains? Great bands, but I'm like, dude, we're, we're 30 years past that. Where's the new band? Where's the new music? There's nothing new. And it's you see what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Uh, I was at dinner. I went and got some food last night after the game. And my friend's like, I'm like, yeah, what are you guys listening to? This is pretty cool. He's like, oh, it's, this is the classic rock station on, on Apple. And I'm like, it's like, uh, uh, sound garden and yeah. bands like that. I'm like, I love all those bands. Don't get me Same. wrong. But I was like, oh, I guess it's not classic rock, but yeah, I don't hear anything new. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I I I try to follow music. I mean, I like I like Gary Clark Jr. I mean, I can name a ton of uh, great blues musicians, stuff that would be rate massive radio hits. And and it's like they pump out these albums, and it's kind of just like a word of mouth thing. I mean, obviously they tour, they have their their core audience, but for some reason you turn on the radio and it's just it's stuff from 30 40 years ago and it's where's the radio dj going like oh we got a great uh, band out of la or a great band out of australia or england or where we want i want to play this record it's like are, is it just suit and ties running these radio stations is there no real freedom to present to the the masses the, the, some of these people's creative efforts like i mean there's there's kids in a garage right now fucking inspired by black sabbath right now that'll never hear the light of day They'll they'll never see the light of day, and it's just. It's I just, hope so, man. I love Black Sabbath. Yeah, there's some sort of control going on, and they don't want you to experiment. <laughs> yeah, stay in the stupid. <laughs> You know, going back to, to some of these TikTokers or some of these people who are trying to really find their way creatively or maybe not even tapping into their creative potential. Like what, like, what do you say to some of these people that are missing the boat on doing something creative? They're basically taking something out of your brain and putting it to, to, to a, a piece of paper or on film or something like that. I don't think a lot of people understand the value of that, of producing something that's basically going to be immortalized for eternity with your name attached to it. I mean, what would you say to the youth? What could you say to inspire some of these kids to get off the damn TikTok? You know, a lot of times, sometimes I go and speak at high schools here in LA County and low income schools and uh, who are not as privileged and and I try and they're, they're all stoked, you know, because they all know my history and but I just come and tell them like what I do. And I say, Hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. I have my YouTube channel and you can too. And like put in the work, do it. And some kid goes, some kid would ask me like, I want to be an actor, but I don't think I can do it. Cause my, I talk funny. I'm like, no, that's not the case. You know, like yeah. that might be work towards your favor, you know, and like, yeah, just go for it. You just follow through. And I think the thing that people lack is following through. Well, I mean, except for the ones on TikTok, I mean, they're falling through with producing garbage. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're but, pretty you know, consistent in that department. Yeah, they're pretty consistent. But I mean, it's just it basically follow through, and if one video sucks, keep yeah. going because they're going to get better and better and better. You know, and yeah, I feel like that that can be said for a lot of people. 
um, in general, even in the non, in, even in a non-creative way, I feel like you're right. I think it's almost this like human condition that people, you know, a procrastinate or mm -hmm. if they don't get immediate success with something, they just right. scrap it or move on where it's like, this is a lifelong commitment. I think a lot of people start things because they either a want to be famous or B they want to make money. And I don't think that should be the reason why you get involved in the arts or why you want to make a movie, why you want to make a song or why you want to make a comic book or whatever it might be. I feel like that's the missing element is that you got to really love what you do. And maybe some yeah, of these what? kids don't know what they truly want. Maybe they're not being inspired what is their surroundings like like you said you work with a lot of inner city kids i grew up in a small town in upstate new york with no opportunities and no inspiration going on and i was one of those kids and i i had a, i picked up a pencil when i was five years old i mean i was the kid in school that would be drawing all over the books and you know i i got an a in art class that was the only a that i got but i didn't no one sat down with me no guidance counselor said hey i see that you're good at this Maybe you should build a portfolio. Nope, nobody kind of like propelled and made me feel, aside from my parents, nobody made me feel like I could actually do it until somebody saw me drawing and offered to pay me money to make a logo for them. And when I had that check in my hand, I go, oh, I can actually do this. But I didn't know that till I was 23, 24 years old. So I feel like there's something going on, whether it's the public education system or just the culture or environment where it's like, I don't feel like we're lifting each other up. And, and even in our own friend circles, I feel like the youth, sometimes they see their buddy drawn. Hey man, that's really good. You should keep, keep at that. I, I don't, I, I don't feel like we lift each other up. I mean, what do you think the void is with that? Do you think that there's a void or do you think there's something missing there with the people being inspired to believe in themselves? Well, um, I think there's some of that. And I think it's a lot of fear. And people don't know that don't listen to fear and just to believe in yourself and, you know, and just, you know, they just, they just kind of be willing to get in the trenches and do the work, you know? And, and for me, when I first started out years ago with my photography, I was working a graveyard shift job, Yeah, you know, and doing whatever I had to do to sleep in the morning, get up, go out and shoot some photos, practice, go to bed before I had to get up. Again, you know, so I had this weird sleep cycle. And I tell you, I don't even remember a dream that year. I was just so like sleep deprived, but I wasn't going to do whatever it took to get to where I needed to. And it, it finally paid off, you know? And so one thing led to the next and one thing led to the next. You just, you just got to keep going, you know? It's like, it's all what I tell these kids in the schools, like there's no such thing as a finish line in life. It's all a journey and just enjoy the good and bad and learn from it and keep moving on, you know, and like, and no, try not to repeat the same mistake, you know, and like, and just enjoy those highs and lows for what the, what it's worth. I mean, you didn't just appear as a photographer or filmmaker. No. No. That's the thing is that there's a kid out there right now that doesn't believe that he could actually do that for a living, yeah. you know, that's why the that's why I tell all these kids, I go, you could do it, man. I go, I, if I did it, I make sure they know I, I come from a broken family. I don't have a lot, wasn't rich, but I did it, you know? And you know, if I did it, you can too. That's why sometimes I'm a little torn when it comes to people who say that they can't do it. It's very frustrating because I feel like it's such a defeatist attitude and it's not valid. I feel like this country is supposed to harbor greatness amongst people. And sometimes I feel like some people's environment just shoots people down. And when I see, I watch the news and I see destruction and I go on TikTok and I see all these people doing nothing and being promoted, I go, well, what about the kid that actually has something? to offer to inspire people what why can't we lift those people up it's really frustrating yeah i agree i anything anything i've been doing lately i'm trying to i'm trying to elevate everyone you know yeah and, uh, yeah i've created a little series on my youtube channel i eventually want to try and get it to a bigger platform it's called relentless ones and uh it's basically following these people who are doing something with their lives and going through the trenches still and um, and they doing what they love and the, I like that, you know, and, uh, my latest episode is a guy who 
plays in five punk bands and has a, his own little nightclub and has a record label and a distribution and and he's just doing it, you know, even though he's sleepless, you know, but yeah, I like that. He's, he's just got that persistence and this goes for it still. And I think a lot of people lack that and it's unfortunate. Dude, no. I love I love the concept, man. Relentless. I mean, that's about not giving up and going after your dreams. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's where can people actually see it? You can see uh, my episodes of Relentless Ones on my YouTube channel at Red Classic Films, or you can go to my website at redclassicfilms.com. I have them all posted there. I've made six. I'm about soon to put out my seventh one, and then I'm shooting two in the process right now but my camera's being repaired. (laughs) Yeah. Fantastic, man. Well, look, where could, I appreciate you doing this, Rick. Well, where could people find you too, personally and reach out to you? Uh, on my, all my social media across the board is, uh, at Rick Kosick, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, no more TikTok. Sorry. Good kids. Get off your fucking ass and do something with your life. Right. The people, people need to be inspired. Yes. Well, look, brother, I appreciate you doing this, man. I know you're busy. I'll let you go. And um, I'm sure we'll be talking again soon, man. Thank you for your time. And thank you for inviting me on your show. All right, brother. I'll talk to you. Okay, bye-bye. You know, (laughs) I think I learned something today. If you're going to be stupid, make us laugh. Don't make us wish for an asteroid. Figure out where that line is. There's an art to it, obviously, and it starts with having a purpose. Okay, I'm, I'm going to head out here in a minute. If you're subscribed to the Patreon, uh, I'm going to be talking about that awful halftime show at the Super Bowl with Rihanna. There, there is some disturbing moments in there. I don't know if people picked up on it or not. Obviously, I can't show you here. But uh, if you want more uh, of the show Uncensored, get on there. I, you know, I was also thinking about doing, uh, offering some of the bonus stuff on the YouTube memberships only thing. I, I don't know anything about this. Does, does anybody know how the members only thing works here on YouTube? I was thinking of offering that too, as an option for people who don't want to do Patreon. I mean, this way I can share bonus content in both places and you could go where you want. The, the only thing I worry about is... I don't know if some of the more risque videos I do on Patreon would even fly here, even if it is under the members only thing. I mean, that was the whole pur- purpose of the Patreon to begin with is that I just can't, there's certain things I can't show because they'll strike my account. So, you know, I started the Patreon, but now I see they got a members only thing, you know, because a lot of people just don't want to go to the Patreon and sign up there. They want to keep it all in one place. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to offer, you know, both things, you know, and have people have the option of where they want to go. I just don't know, you know, if I can share all the stuff that that I'm doing on Patreon there because of the 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 YouTube guidelines. I mean, I could probably do a live stream and chat with you guys to make up for the stuff I can't post here. I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about it. I mean, let me let me know what you guys want, you know, or if that's even something you guys would be into. Oh, and if you're into the snail mail thing, uh you can send whatever you want to Joey B Tunes or Joey B versus the World 178 Columbus Ave. 237190 New York, New York 10023. Yeah, I've been behind on reading your letters, but I but I'll tell you, I read all of them. So so don't feel like they're getting lost in the shuffle. I'll get to them. I, you know, a lot of great artists out there too, authors. Yeah, you know, j- just a really talented bunch we got here. Shout out to the DC show for the vinyl too. I love it. And uh somebody sent me a framed photo of a guy on a boat fishing. I like it, but I there was no letter or anything. So I, I don't know if that's your photo or, or what the significance is. So email me and explain yourself, please. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to run. Uh, this has been fun. Take care of yourself and watch out for phone zombies. They'll walk right in front of your car. We need crossing signs for them, like we got for deer out in the country. All right. Love you guys. 